Hello everyone, and welcome to uh, back to the channel. Um, I've decided to go ahead and just do a quick update video on the vampire counts based on the live stream that played last night. Um, I'm just going to have it running in the background um, via my Twitch account, but you can't say any personal information, so it's whatever. Um, so I'll point out things as they happen in the background, but I'm not going to focus too much on that. Though you'll probably want to pay attention in these upcoming parts because she's going to zoom in and show like the Black Knights and the uh, the Direwolves and everything's looking so good. So good. Um, I watched the live stream for about, pff, I think, three hours last night. Um, and I wanted to come to you guys and let y'all know all the really cool information I found out. Um, I Nothing bad happened. <laughs> I thought it went really well. Uh, they played through the quest battle uh, three times, um, <clears throat> which is amazing because they all played very different. Um, up there in the right corner, you'll see Joey on the left, and I believe Prince of Macedon on the right, one of the earlier Total War YouTubers. Um, they all, everyone played fantastic games. We got to see completely different play styles. Um, if you want to watch it yourself and listen to all the commentary, I would highly recommend going to the Total War official Twitch channel, and if you go to videos, you can watch it yourself and enjoy. But everything's looking so good, from the zombies, to the creepy fell bats, to the the dire wolves, uh, the skeletons, Banford himself. Um, so, let's talk about some of the news that came out that some people might be interested in. Uh, first thing that I found really interesting is that they have confirmed that magic is going to function like it does in tabletop and that every single spell, or at least uh, many of them, have a bigger version. So although I'm not sure how to do it yet, because I don't think I saw anybody actually attempt it, um, there is a way to ex essentially supercharge a spell and cast a more powerful version of it. Um, for instance, later on in this video... I'll be sure to show you guys the scene where Joey casts Ray's Dead, which is an amazing animation, by the way. Um, and if you cast the base version, it summons a pretty large group of zombies. Uh, I think it summons a full 160 guys. Um, but if you cast the bigger version, it'll summon Skeleton Warriors instead, which have way better stats. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I thought that was really cool. But we, we also found out, though, that it actually comes with an, a pretty interesting risk. And that um, during the Azhag video uh, a little while back, we if you watch that video, you'll uh, remember that there's a part where the Bretonian damsel miscasts. And she fires off a spell and basically does a bunch of damage to herself because she wasn't able to control the magic. Well, miscasts are in the game, and the way they work is that when you go for the big version of a spell, um, there's a chance that you will miscast and take your character will take a bunch of damage. I really like that mechanic. I love that, you know, you can get into a situation where you're like, man, I really, you know, I'm, I really want to go for that big comet and fire it off, but if your wizard's too low of health, you might kill your own character. Um, as for the mechanics of the undead, they are really, really good. It's very faithful to tabletop. Um, in that, with the undead, uh, undead do not suffer... Oh, and you'll notice the Dire Wolves actually have a rule called Fast Calvary, just like they do, or Vanguard, excuse me, just like they do in Tabletop, um, which Vanguard allows you to deploy outside of the deployment box, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I'm getting distracted. So, um, the way that the Undead work now is that they have morale and stamina, but it does not function like any other army in the game. And what I mean by that is that when undead, uh, they don't feel fear, so undead, you're not able to do morale damage to them with, like, big scary monsters or anything like that. The only way to actually hurt their morale is, you know, by shooting them or outmaneuvering them or things along those lines. Um, but if their morale gets too low, which most of the time is caused by them getting isolated... Um, the undead will start to crumble. So they don't they don't run away, they don't hide, they will hold their ground and keep fighting till they die. But should their morale get too low, the uh, they'll, they'll basically just start taking 
massive amounts of consistent damage and they'll just completely fall apart which is a lot which is exactly what they do in tabletop is that um when they um when they would lose combat resolution really badly undead would pop as we called it which was due to their unstable rule i am really really glad to see this mechanic holding up um i know for a lot of people they like i have one of my students who will probably comment down in the comment section uh really hates the instability mechanic but i really think it's the only way to do the undead justice uh i think outside of that I mean, if you have if you have an army that's functionally unbreakable, it has to have a downside. But I also like that this opens the door for demons to be playable and to also suffer from popping or instability. So it's really nice to see that really different mechanic. So if you're someone that's a very good um, defensive player, and I don't mean defensive like the dwarves where you sit in a corner and shoot things. I mean more defensive in that you're very tactical and you like to keep really rigid formations and guard your flanks as you advance forward. Vampire accounts are going to be a really fun army for you, I think. Um, the vampire accounts don't have any shooting. Um, I mean, we know banshees are in the game and I imagine they'll have banshee screams, but I bet it's going to be... We know terror guys are in the game too. Um, there's a There was an image from the live stream where you can see a terror guys in the background. So those are 100% confirmed. I've also seen Crypt Horrors and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, it seems like most of the Vampire Count books end. I haven't seen anything about... Uh, I'll get to the point I was about to make, but I haven't seen any Blood Knights yet. I have not seen um, any Corpse Carts. No Coven Throne. Um, and I have not seen Spirit Hosts. Or Cairn Wraiths. Those are the only things I really haven't seen. But pretty much everything else, I think, I've seen in the game. Which is really exciting. The Vampire Counts seem like they have a really solid roster. Um, but anyway, um, as I was saying, um, I the Vampire Counts definitely have a very, uh, uh, like a purely melee focused line. And they're really good at it. Um, in that they have lots of numbers. Um, and they do have fast troops. The Direwolves are extremely quick. The Felbats can get around really good. Um, the Black Knights are pretty heavy cav, but you can take them in two variants, which is you can either take the regular Black Knights, or you can take the Black Knights that have Lances and Barding. And the ones with Lance and Barding are, are really slow, but they're also stupidly strong. Like, they are fantastically strong. Um, if you go watch the live stream, the fight before this one, I think Al Bickham's playing... He zooms in on a charge of the Black Knights plowing into some goblins, and it is just disgusting. Like, he just wrecks them. The impacts look solid. Actually, you know what? While we're here, I can just go ahead and see if I can find it. Um, let's see. It's near the end. I think this is when he had already basically won. Yep. So let's see if we can find that charge. Because it's really worth watching. Um, okay, so there are the goblins in the back, uh, back here, if y'all can see my mouse. Um, I think this is it, but the vampire counts are looking so solid. Um, all of their tabletop mechanics are in, which I love. I love that they're an army that rewards players for staying very, um, having a strong core and being a very, being very aware of the battlefield. As vampire counts, you cannot afford to split your army up. And just go after different targets if you don't have enough characters to support it. I also love that Manfred has both lures. Um, I was worried they were just going to sort of throw him under the bus. Um, since Heinrich Kimmler was confirmed as the other one. And he's obviously the casting lord. Um, but, oh wait, is this it? Oh no, we already missed it. Okay. I'm just going to keep backing up. I'll, I will find it, I promise you. If it's, if it's the last thing I do on this episode, it will be to show you the Raised Dead animation and these Calvary... Oh, here it comes. So look at this. So he rides in. It doesn't look like he's moving that fast. Like, it really doesn't. But look look at this. He just absolutely obliterates them. Like, oh my goodness. Like, that unit just instantly broke. Um, so I'm loving the impact that Calvary have. Calvary looked like they hit, like, freaking rocks. Um, and it's very, very cool. I also like the flame trails. 
that they seem to leave behind them. Uh, I'm wondering if that indicates the ethereal rule that they have in that in tabletop when black knights charge they gain ethereal and can charge over all kinds of terrain at a consistent speed without um risk of damage um also if you haven't seen this map is fantastic in the background is the pillar of bone and it is huge and they have confirmed that they've rendered the entire thing so that if you're able to look up during the fight you can see all the way up to its peak um and that, that is a massive structure i'm loving the maps absolutely loving it um, the hero fights look pretty good. Manfred's animations are pretty awesome in close combat. Um, I I'm not a huge fan of him on foot, because it looks like he gets knocked around a little easy. But he's an absolute monster. Um, uh, but let's see if we can find that Ray's dead clip. Oh. It's right here at the end. Oh, okay, here it is. So, uh, she's gonna cast it right after she does, uh, Invocation of Neheck. Um... Which, the undead are very reliant, it seems, on magic. They have a lot of really cool buff spells. Um, Invocation of Neheck uh, ca causes regeneration on an undead unit, but only targets a single unit. Um, and then Raise Dead looks like this. So, you have all those black... So, those are all... That's the black magic. And look at that. Look at that. Isn't that glorious? Like, just... Ah! And it has a wide casting range, and it casts at an angle from the caster. So a lot of people were talking about that it's extremely easy to use it to block cavalry charges as they come running towards your uh, casters. Or, you could just pop them right up behind the enemy, and all of a sudden you have a rear charge on your enemy. So it seems like vampire counts are going to be able, or probably going to be the best army, right now at least, at immediately adapting to a situation and taking advantage morale-wise. Which is good, because if they're losing a fight... The entire army will just crumble into nothing really fast. Um, if you watch the full live stream, the final fight, which is later on, is being played by um, uh, Macedon, or, um, and he he actually loses because he gets his army way too split up, and they just all crumble away into nothing. And like the moment Manfred actually got surrounded by the enemy. Uh, like, he was surrounded on all sides by an enemy unit, and he started crumbling, he died really quick. So, it's definitely a good, strong lesson of Vampire Count players are going to have to be very tactically aware. You know, you're not going to be able to afford to just run your army forward without paying close, super close attention. You know, like, if you want to have a very aggressive playstyle where you just charge your army forwards and smash everything in sight, I would highly recommend Greenskins. Vampire counts, first of all, don't move that fast. And second of all, if your enemy outmaneuvers you, you're in really big trouble. Um, but I love how exotically different all four armies seem to be. You know, dwarves seem like they're very good at forming little islands of defense that, are, that have crazy good morale and will just hold the line for as long as possible, despite the fact they're grossly outnumbered. Greenskins look like they literally just swarm over the map in a tide of green. And can just pummel the enemy to bits all over the place. The Black Orcs, which showed up in these videos, are disgustingly good. Uh, there's been a few new animations added. Um, like, there's a casting of uh, Curse of the Bad Moon, which she will zoom up on when it's cast here in a second. Oh, see, I can see the wizard casting it. Look at that! So, it's a big old scary goblin goblinified moon that has that gross worm tongue coming out of it and it's moving very slowly but like that is way scarier looking than the just rotating green orb they had before um and it's also very it's very goblin appropriate um but yeah so far really excited really enjoying all of the animations i think everything's looking great so far you know they did three full playthroughs of this map and the computer was scripted to have <clears throat> to have certain ideas, but the computer actually played notably different every match. Um, I thought the AI was not bad. I thought it actually played pretty intelligently. Um, I look forward to seeing an unscripted fight to really see what it's capable of and to see what it looks like when the computer isn't relying on like preset strategies. But I'm really glad to see that the computer's not just like, oh, okay, I'm just going to turtle on this hill until I die, or oh, okay, I'm just going to slam into you and just keep fighting until I break like one thing you'd see you'll see when you watch these videos is 
um, the wolf riders especially will come in and hit with a charge, do some damage, and the moment the computer realizes it's losing, it immediately falls back, reorganizes itself, and then recharges. Uh, which I thought was very clever. Um, like, Joey, uh, I thought, honestly, I thought her fight went, I think her fight went the second best, maybe the best, but, like, each fight, it looked difficult. Like, it did not look like they were just walking over the computer. I mean, Mastodon played fairly decently, but because he got two split up, the Greenskins took advantage of it, surrounded him, wiped him out. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying everything I've seen so far. Um, most of the news, of course, that I learned during the live stream pertain to the vampire accounts. In that they look great, they sound great, um, the mechanics look on point. I've talked to a couple, I've talked to some friends that were at the event who actually got to play the game and they say it feels great um, and that it's like, it's as good as it looks, which is so exciting and speaks so well for release. Um, obviously, it's a script to quest battle, so it's probably a tad bit more polished than maybe, you know, the just the random fights that happen all the time. Um, but I think this bodes very well for Total War Warhammer. Um, especially with the extra month that they've given themselves to make sure that the game is absolutely ready. Uh, I think we're going to have a fantastic release. Maybe that's just blind optimism, but I mean, from everything I've seen and everything I've heard, especially from people who've gotten to have hands-on with the game, things are looking good. Things are looking very, very good. Um, I That's pretty much going to do it for this video. Uh, I will be back later today with a lore video. I know it's been a while since I've actually just put out just a regular good old lore video. Um, as well as the next episode of Warhammer Mark of Chaos. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, CA is doing... A, I, I don't know if they ever come on here, but... Uh, CA, you're doing a absolutely fantastic job. It's, it's so tasteful, and it's such a wonderful representation of tabletop. You know, it's, it's Total War, but it's still Warhammer. You know, that Warhammer flair, that Warhammer life, they're nailing it. They're nailing it. Um, so yeah, that'll pre pretty much do it for me. Um, the only... Oh, uh, the last note, for anyone that's curious. Uh, so Ray's Dead um, kind of had some questions asked about it because it seemed a little overpowered. Um, it can only be used if your army isn't full. So if you have a 20 stack, you can't cast Raise Dead until um, there's an opening. But from what Al Bickham said, it sounded like if you cast Raise Dead, you get to keep the unit that you raised um, onto the campaign map. Which I thought, if that's the case, is pretty cool. But your lim you can only cast it a maximum of two times per fight. So even if you have multiple wizards, so like you have a Master Necromancer... Um, and some vampires, if those are on the roster, which should be released here in a few days. Um, then even if you have all those guys and they have the lore of vampires and raise dead, you can only cast it a maximum of two times and only if you have enough space in your army. Which is good, because it'd be, I, I could see it getting really overpowered if people could just like throw in you know a couple characters and be, just send them out by themselves and then just raise up an entire army. Um, but yeah, I think that'll do it for me today. Um... Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I'll be back with some more important information later today. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day.